All right, we are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in to join us tonight for our virtual scholarship session. My name is Lauren Samuelson, and I am a member of our admission team here at Center. I'm an Associate Director of Admission and Scholarship Programs, and this is a special program all about the Lincoln Scholars Program, how to apply, what we're looking for. Um, you'll get to hear from our director of the program and several current students, which is super exciting. But um, just really excited that you're here. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. Um, hopefully, this will give you more information about the program, what to expect, um, and just to find out more about Center along the way too. So just to kick us off, I'm going to start with a brief introduction to Center College. So if you're not familiar with us, just to give you an idea of what we're all about. We are a small liberal arts college located in the center of Kentucky. Um, that is how we got our name when we were founded. We have about 1,400 students here on campus. Um, we find 1,400 to really be the sweet spot for students here on campus with us. Um, it's a way for us to maintain one main dining hall, one library, smaller classes, um, a really cohesive campus feel, but you're still getting to meet and get to know new people continually throughout the year. And so this is important to be thinking about today when you're hearing about all these opportunities that we have at a smaller college, but you're still getting this really close-knit, incredible experience too. When it comes to academics at Center, and um, this is a list of the different majors and minors that we offer. Like I said before, we are a small liberal arts college, which means that you take a little bit of everything. Our general education curriculum means that you get to take topics from a lot of different areas of study, and then you also have until the end of your second year to officially declare a major, which gives you some time to kind of get to Center, get settled, kind of try a bunch of different things before you have to officially declare. You also have an academic advisor that walks through that whole process with you, um, and you can really find support from all over campus as you're going through that process. But you can see all the different majors and minors that are here. Some of our most popular majors on campus are things like economics and finance, behavioral neuroscience, politics, um, history, um, physics. Um, we just built a brand new science building for things like physics, environmental studies, and chemistry, which is super exciting. Um, our newest programs on campus are business and Middle Eastern studies. Um, and it's exciting to see that centers growing academically each year too and adding new programs and maintaining some really cool ones. When it comes to campus culture, we do have a very involved and engaged campus. 98% um, of our students live on campus all four years. It's required to live on campus as a center student, um, which means that you're going to be really involved in student life. We have about 90 different clubs. Um, our students are involved in a variety of different activities, whether it's the arts, service, athletics. Um, you're going to hear from our students tonight, but they will be involved in a lot of different things, which I think is a really fun facet of being a center student as well. Another major facet of the center experience is study abroad. Um, study abroad is a huge hallmark of the center years that you have. Um, about 85% of our students do study abroad, close to 40% are studying abroad more than once. Um, we'll talk about different opportunities with the Lincoln Scholars Program specifically tonight, but when you're a center student, um, it is the same price to study abroad for a full semester that it is to live on campus. So all of your scholarship, financial aid, everything carries over for those trips, which is really convenient when you are a center student. We also have something called a center term, which is in when January, our students only take one class for three weeks and you get to really take unique courses, kind of different. It's also a really popular time to go abroad. So um, Robert might talk about his center term trip to Finland um, that he's led, which is pretty amazing. But um, study abroad is a huge part of the center experience. If that's something you're interested in, center is definitely a great place to look into. And looking a little bit more about our student body and where students come from, um, this is one of my favorite slides that we show, just because I think it really gives you a picture of how many students are coming from different experiences, backgrounds, places, um, and just perspectives. So I always said that when I was a center student, I think I learned just as much from students in my classes that I did from faculty, um, just because our students really come from a variety of different backgrounds and experiences. And so you can see domestically, we're 50-50 and stay out of state for where our students are coming from. You can see that we've got students coming from all corners of the globe. We've got about five to six percent of students that are international students. Um, but what I think is cool about this is that it shows how much Center really wants to be a place for everyone. Um, growing and advocating for diversity and inclusion is something that our college is very focused on um, and has been growing in a very authentic way, which has been really cool to see Center as we're moving to the future. Thinking about applying, if you are a senior looking to apply to Center, and um, we have some deadlines that are passed, but we have one that's coming up. Our January 15th regular decision application deadline is coming up. Um, it's free to apply to Center on the common application. Um, you're automatically considered for our general merit-based scholarships when you apply, and then we have a specific scholarship app for the premier scholarships if you're looking at Brown and Lincoln, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about. 
but I wanted to pass it over to Robert Shockoff um, to talk a little bit more specifically about the Lincoln Scholars Program with you all. Good evening, everybody. It's a, it's a pleasure to, uh, to see all of you um, and to be with you uh, this afternoon, this evening, uh, wherever you are. Um, what I'd like to do is, is just to provide a, an overview of the Lincoln Scholars Program and then um, to turn it over to students who are actually experiencing the Lincoln Scholars Program. Uh, we have uh, three scholars. Uh, who will be uh, joining us this evening, and we'll hear from them shortly. Lauren, if you could just flip the slide there. So um, first of all, the Lincoln Scholars Program uh, was designed to attract exceptional young people uh, from around the world who possess not only a deep desire to make our world a better place, but also have demonstrated the intellect and the capacity to do so. The scholarship is named after, after the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, and it honors his rise to greatness from his very humble beginnings right here in Kentucky. It also celebrates uh, an alum of Center College who not only encouraged Lincoln to study law, but was also his first law partner. So the way that the, the program works is that we welcome uh, 10 Lincoln scholars every year uh, into the program and we're getting ready to welcome our seventh cohort. Uh, you may be one of those members. Uh, we currently have 40 scholars in the program. There are four cohorts of 10 scholars each, and they hail from 11 different states in the United States and 14 different countries uh, from around the world. Uh, we, we call uh, the Lincoln Scholars Program a full ride plus scholarship. And, and what that means is that uh, the Lincoln Scholars Program covers not only the comprehensive cost of an education at Center College, which means uh, full tuition, full room, and full board uh, for four years, but it also uh, gives you many other uh, benefits and advantages. And some of those are special academic year programming, uh, individual mentoring for the full time that you're at Center College, three funded summer enrichment experiences, and the opportunity to plan and then do a capstone-like pre-professional project before you graduate. You might be thinking, what type of students are we looking for um, in the Lincoln Scholars Program? Well, simply put, we're looking for people who are both thinkers and doers. And so, of course, uh, we want Lincoln scholars to be academically accomplished, but we also want them to have a, uh, a bigger um, and, a, and, a, and a better uh, vision of, of, a, of our world, um, and also have an idea of what their role might be in enacting change that leads to that better world. There are five main goals uh, for the Lincoln Scholars Program. The first of which is to hone and broaden your already considerable intellect through the amazing liberal arts education uh, that Lauren just described. And then to up the ante. Uh, and so the special programming of the Lincoln Scholars Program is to design is designed to promote and to further develop um, the grit and the tenacity that agents for change uh, need to possess uh, when confronting uh, challenges in our world. Uh, it's also designed to help you learn how to better channel your drive and your passion so that you become a more effective and a more efficient agent for change. And then importantly, uh, the program seeks to develop and then expand within 
uh, Lincoln scholars, their capacity for compassion and for empathy, because we believe that leaders and agents for change in our world are not folks who simply tell other folks what to do, but they're people who listen carefully and deeply um, to the stakeholders that they're seeking to serve and then tailor their projects to the needs of those folks. And the way that we do that is through uh, programming that is completely unique to the Lincoln Scholars Program. Um, and that programming can be divided into two major components. The first is academic year programming, and the second is summer enrichment programming. In terms of the academic year, you would be involved in um, workshops that we call Lincoln Seminars, and each Lincoln, set, uh, Lincoln Scholar has an opportunity to uh, present and then lead a workshop on an issue about what they're about which they're passionate. Um, we also have breakout seminars where we invite people who are already out in the world um, working for positive change to come and visit with us and, and we learn from them and also are inspired by them. Um, you are, uh, you have individual mentoring for the full time uh, that you're in the program. And then you also engage in some, some larger activities like the Lincoln Forum, which is where Lincoln scholars share their learning and their takeaways from their summer enrichment experiences with the campus community and, and beyond the campus community. And then also the Lincoln retreats. There's one in the fall and one in the spring. And these are planned by the sophomore cohort to not only uh, bring uh, cohesion and, and promote um, uh, deeper relationships amongst the Lincoln Scholars community, but also to help us look at and grapple with um, big ideas outside of the program as a collective whole. And then uh, we have summer enrichment programming that is, again, completely unique to the Lincoln Scholars Program. Um, if you're selected as a Lincoln Scholar, you will arrive on campus about two weeks before um, all of the other first year students uh, come to campus, uh, and you will uh, be involved in a leadership workshop. Uh, you'll be involved in a colloquium um, about uh, the namesake of the scholarship, uh, Abraham Lincoln, where we'll learn um, not only from his great successes, but also from his failures um, and his um, inadequacies uh, and how we might not only be inspired by him, but also how we might um, better reflect on um, his uh, his shortcomings as a leader, um, and quite frankly, uh, as a person, and how we might kind of learn from, from those instances. Um, and then uh, we'll take it on the road, and you're going to do a, uh, an outdoor experience with uh, North Carolina Outward Bound School uh, in the Pisgah National Forest in North Carolina. And then uh, as a rising sophomore and then as a rising junior, you're going to do what we call themed summer enrichment experiences. And these are four to five weeks in length. And they're designed to help develop within you um, skills like critical thinking and planning and organizing, um, as well as um, the softer skills that I talked about before, compassion uh, and empathy, things that you're going to need to be an effective and efficient agent for change in our world. And then as a rising senior, you have the opportunity to plan and then uh, implement uh, and after you finish to evaluate uh, an 11-week experience um, that is tailored um, to your major as well as to your future career and academic goals and is designed to kind of propel you out of center and into the, the real world. And if those things are not enough, well, then you can engage in uh, something that we call self-initiated projects um, where you can really do a deep dive 
uh, into passion projects um, outside of the structured and traditional programming of the Lincoln Scholars Program. And there's not only funding, uh, but also support available for you to do those things. So that's a, a kind of big picture bird's eye view of the program. Let's kind of dive into things a little bit more deeply and see what life is like at Center College and then at Center College as a Lincoln Scholar. And we'll, uh, we'll invite uh, the three Lincoln Scholars who are with us today to, uh, to um, put on their cameras uh, and uh, introduce themselves to us. Lizzie, we can start with you. You are first on. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lizzie Lewis. I'm a current junior from Mystic, Connecticut, uh, majoring in studio arts and minoring in politics. Um, on campus, I'm involved in Kentucky Ensemble, uh, Greek Life, Center Democrats, Center Art Society, and I'm also a first year mentor. Cool. Lorena, do you want to go next? Oh, we might be frozen on our end. We'll jump to Sharon and see if we can get you back next time. Hello, everyone. I am Sharon Mega. I am an international student from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And um, I am a sophomore. So I haven't declared my major yet, but I'm thinking of double majoring in mathematics and uh, data science. On campus, I am the vice president of the Black STEM Coalition, which is a club that um, helps Black, black people that are in STEM majors to, to like propel themselves forward by involving in seminars, by, uh, by doing so many uh, activities. And um, I have so many things that I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to initiate uh, a new TEDx program in, uh, in, in um, Center College and in Ethiopia. I run a nonprofit that helps children um, get access to educational supplies on a yearly basis. <laughs> I'm going to try that again without my camera. I think that's the only way this is going to work, but I'm Lorena. I'm a junior from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm an Elfworth scholar and uh, majoring in international studies with a minor in social justice. Uh, on campus, I'm involved with the after school program uh, um, and uh, Center Speak as well as off campus with a nonprofit called Centro Latino, working with uh, immigrants in the Central Kentucky region. That's awesome. You all do such cool things, which is really fun. <laughs> um, it is fun to hear more about those. I also just wanted to encourage, we're gonna to have specific questions about the Lincoln Scholars Program that we're gonna go through tonight, but also if students listening have specific questions for um, the director or for students, feel free to use the chat as well. And we can go through those as we're Kind of jumping around but Robert I'll pass it over to you if you want to start with more specifically can questions then we can go from there. Surely um, so I think uh, let's start kind of big picture and, and uh, we'll, we'll hone in on things here. Um, first of all uh, maybe let's answer this Besides the Lincoln Scholars Program, uh, Lizzie, what was uh, one reason that you decided to come to Center College? Um, for me, I was really looking for a close-knit community in the school that I went to. I wanted to um, be at a college that um, had involvement in the outside community, but really was sort of self-sustained and a place where I could spend four years and not get bored of the opportunities that I had. And that is definitely not the case. I'm coming up on the middle of my third year and I already feel like I've missed out on so many opportunities which is kind of crazy <laughs> but and also not true um so I was really looking for that looking for a tight-knit community and I definitely found it here and Sharon as an international student um so what kind of attracted you to center uh, besides the Lincoln Scholars program um, I, before I decided to become a Lincoln, I was like on the internet, just looking at so many videos of Center College and what people have to say about it. And uh, I love the fact that it's a, it has rigorous academics, but they like, like you're guided through it. Like, for example, in the mathematics department, uh, it's like, I have like moms and dads in there. Like, honestly, it's not like, oh, I am the professor, you are the student type of relationship. It's like, hey, Sharon, how are you today? And just like the love 
And as an international student, I wanted to, I, it is like, I wanted family. I wanted a community where I would be welcomed. And um, I think I have honestly found it in Center College. Like everyone is so sweet and kind and just, I can go up, up, up to them and approach them with anything that like I'm going through and they'll be more than willing to help me. <laughs> Uh, and I think that we lost Lorena, so we'll come back to Lorena um, on, on, on the same question perhaps later on. Um, let's, let's get into uh, the Lincoln Scholars Program. And um, Lizzie, maybe you could um, talk a little bit about um, what it means to be a Lincoln Scholar. I know that that's a really, you know, kind of big and, and broad um, question, but you know, if you could give us, you know, kind of one piece of what it's like to be, or what it means to be a Lincoln Scholar on campus, uh, I think that would be really helpful for the folks here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that what it means to be a Lincoln Scholar is hard to define, and something that's continuing to change, especially because our program is so new. Um, but for me, um, it's leaders, being a Lincoln on campus means being a leader, being someone who um, isn't content with campus or the world to stay stagnant. Um, I look at change that's happened on the wider scale um, at Center over the past, over the time that I've been here, and a lot of it has been initiatives from Lincoln scholars, um, and I think if you talk to any of us, we each have different areas of campus that we work in to change and to make better, and um, so I think always envisioning a better world and a better Center um, and working for that, yeah. And uh, Sharon, uh, how about yourself? What does it mean to be a Lincoln Scholar on Center's campus? Um, to be a Lincoln Scholar on campus, in, ad in addition to what Lizzie said, which is being an agent of change, I also believe that it's more about the compassion and empathy at the same time, because the Lincoln Scholars are people that are, um, not only change agents which are going to be involved in so many things but they're also the people inside the classrooms that will say that say those things that are um so so out of the world or so out of like your context that are what if you've thought that will change your mind about something they're so like worldwide and like very like a diverse group of people that each and each and every person will like they bring something so completely new and so com like completely like driven onto campus. And I think that Lorena is back. Lorena, can you hear us? Maybe not. Okay, um, I see that we do have a question in the chat and I'll get to that um, in a second. Um, but let's let's talk a little bit about programming here for uh, the Lincoln Scholars Program, and we're going to start right off um, from the very beginning. Uh, you'll recall, hopefully, uh, that I mentioned one of those um, unique uh, summer enrichment experiences you're going to have um, is the pre-first year orientation, uh, where you're on campus uh, before all of the other first year. Um, students arrive and you're, um, you're doing a, a leadership workshop, you're learning about the namesake of the scholarship, and then you're going out and testing your own leadership skills and your own grit and tenacity in the mountains of um, the Pisgah National Forest uh, in North Carolina. And um, Sharon, you're probably closest to that as a sophomore. Um, and because of COVID, uh, your North Carolina Outward Bound experience was a little bit later than, than we had originally planned. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about that pre-first year orientation, how that kind of connected you to people before you actually started, and then about um, this idea of, of going off into the wilderness. Uh, if you could just talk about those two things. Of course. So NCOB, which is North Carolina Outward Bound, NCOBS actually, <laughs> um, is such an amazing experience. Like I cannot begin to explain. So 
essentially what happens is you sensei will make you get up at 5 a.m and um <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna go onto a bus and everybody will be sleeping the whole way and then uh, during a well, while once you start getting closer to north carolina you're given um like reflection sheets where um you reflect about like what do you think your experience is going to be like you uh, some people may say i'm a warrior i'm going to like i'm going to go in i'm going to kill it this that the third and then other, other people will be like i'm a warrior um i will be planning and i will be like planned and strategic about my moves and um so what happens essentially is you get your gear sensei will drop you off in north carolina and leave you there for a couple of days um <laughs> But you're going to be with people that will guide you and mentor you the whole way. Um, NCOB is very like a, a very new experience, even uh, like for so many people in that cohort, because you're going to be backpacking throughout like North Carolina. And uh, OK, OK. <laughs> OK, sorry. <laughs> You're going to be backpacking throughout North Carolina, and then you're going to be the, the thing is you're going to be um, just within your cohort. So you're gonna have to like interact with your people and like get to know one another. And it is getting to know one another at the stage where, well, none of you have showered in four days. Then if you're like us, like it, it rained the whole time. <laughs> so it's gonna be like getting to know one another at like your barest. And it's fun because I genuinely love each and every, like I did already, but like it made me see other sides of like, my cohort members and I love them very much. <laughs> All righty. Uh, and I think Lorena can now hear. Um, so Lorena, uh, what I'd like to ask you to do uh, is maybe to talk a little bit about these themed summer enrichment experiences. Um, and I know that for your first one, you did big ideas and challenges and worked with um, FIMRIC or the Foundation for International Medical Relief of Children. And then for your second one, um, you did uh, uh, With Outstretched Hands, Serving Humankind, and you worked with the Shepherd Consortium on Poverty. If you could just talk about two, both of those things, that would be great. Yes. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Um, so yes, for my first summer, which was during COVID, I did FEMERC, uh, which was a virtual experience. Um, FEMERC is a, was a virtual global health fellowship that was eight weeks, and I worked as a virtual health volunteer, um, learning first about some of the social determinants to health, such as transportation and how that affects a lot of people around the world in terms of their access to healthcare. And then um, as a volunteer, we also I worked on uh, developing age appropriate educational materials and hands on activities and just different workshops um, on a variety of health topics, specifically for high school students um, in Peru. And then for my second theme experiences experience, which was um, with outstretched hands, serving humankind, I worked um, with a nonprofit organization in Bar Baltimore, Maryland, uh, that works with uh, forced migrants. So. For this organization, I worked as a intern, as a forced migrant assistant advocate, just working with asylum seekers and uh, helping them through the legal immigration process. Um, and um, I assisted them with case management, uh, which focusing primarily in sort of assessing their needs and then linking and sharing them um, resources and connecting them to other uh, sliding scale support networks and, and organizations. Um, and this was something that I did through Shepherd. Um, and Shepherd is something that Center and there's other schools that are involved with, with Shepherd that connects under um, undergraduate students to nonprofits across the US. And that's what allowed me to get connected with this awesome nonprofit organization that allowed me to really work um, with asylum seekers in and learn about the ways that a lot of structural barriers and how asylum seekers have been affected by COVID in such a disproportionate way because of just their lack of access to public assistance benefits because of their status and things of that nature, which was something that I was working um, with and something that I'm very passionate about that I got to work with this summer. All righty. Um, and 
going back to, to Lizzie, Lizzie, you talked about, um, you know, one thing you, you wanted to, to find was, was community at center. And uh, one thing that you've really kind of helped to build within the Lincoln Scholars Program is community, um, both as a, a pre-first year orientation leader, and then now as the coordinator of our peer mentoring uh, program that happens within the Lincoln Scholars Program. So not only are you receiving mentoring from me, the director, but you're also receiving peer mentoring as well, too. And Liz, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about both of those things, being a leader in a peer uh, in, in pre-first year orientation, and then now, you know, coordinating um, and really codifying our, our peer mentoring system within the program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with the being a pre first year orientation leader, I essentially got to be um, an orientation leader for Sharon's cohort um, as they came in and did their um, first year experience learning about Lincoln, um, becoming a cohort, really starting to bond. And that was an amazing experience, not only to um, be able to essentially go through that program again and relearn a lot of why Lincoln is the person that this scholarship is named after um, and sort of be able to understand it a little bit better after a year in the program. Um, but also to get to know the new cohort, cohort and um, welcome them in, which was a really amazing experience. Um, and with being the peer mentor coordinator, that has honestly been, I think the most amazing leadership experience I've had at Center so far for so many reasons. Um, the one of which is just that Lincoln gives us so much and I am constantly so grateful for this scholarship and um, to be able to give back to the program in that way has been really um, amazing, but I've essentially helped with, with the help of Sensei created um, this peer mentorship program that gives each of our new cohort members, um, our incoming first years, a uh, peer mentor in either the sophomore, junior or senior class who is similar to them in a variety of ways, whether that be um, academic goals, future endeavors, um, if they're an international or domestic student, um, a ton of different things that help us figure out who gets paired with whom. Um, and it's been a really amazing way to do that, um, to sort of, again, give back to the scholarship and um, help our first years have somebody within the program that they can always go to. Um, I've done it for the last two years, which means that I've gotten to really hone in what we did last year um, and continue to make it a successful program, which has been great. Um, and I've been so supported from Sensei and from all of my peers to really make it a program that I think has helped a lot of people. Um, I know from a lot of my friends who have, who either, who like last year were first years that their um, mentors, their senpai, as we call them, were really helpful. And my Kohai, who is my mentee, she said to me this year, she was like, I would have transferred if I didn't have you. And that was just crazy. So <laughs> to be able to, again, have that experience and um, be able to have leadership within the program that gives back and also allows me to um, experience being a leader and test out how to be an effective leader has been so amazing. So yeah. Um, I think in, in each of your answers, this kind of mystical creature sensei has has come up um, and we should contextualize that um, sensei is dr shalkoff um, aka me uh, and uh, if you're if you're a named a lincoln scholar you'll find out uh, how exactly that came about um, lizzie also used uh, two other japanese words senpai and kohai uh, meaning um, a more experienced or a mentor um, and perhaps a less experienced uh, in the Lincoln Scholars Program, a mentee. Um, and you'll, you'll find out a little bit about why we use that language as well too. We won't give everything away. We, we wanna keep uh, things exciting for uh, those folks who are thinking about the Lincoln Scholars Program. Speaking of that, looks like we've got a lot of questions in the chat um, and I wanna, I wanna address those. Um, Leslie says, I love the idea of self-initiated projects. Are there any examples that come to mind? Well, it's a good thing that Lorena is here. Lorena, would you tell us about your self-initiated project and what you've been doing with CTIP? 
Yes, of course. So uh, for my self-initiated project, I collaborated with another Lincoln Scholar. Uh, her name is Anakriti Konwar, and she is now a senior. And we both created a skill-based sexual health virtual workshop series that we pioneered this past spring. But we had been working on it since pretty much COVID summer. Um, and pretty much this through this workshop series, we wanted to provide students at center with a space to explore, discuss, and sort of equip themselves with knowledge about um, topics such as pleasure, purity culture, hookup culture, vulva anatomy, um, and pleasure and boundary setting communication. Um, and sort of this self-initiated project kind of grew out of conversations I had with her and just uh, about just pleasure often being politicized and tabooed in, in the case of cis women and sort of the lack of sexual education that we would have both received growing up. And so from that, we decided that we wanted to create a virtual workshop that kind of uh, dealt with these issues and um, helped alleviate this problem, not just for us, but for our peers. And so we, utilizing funding from the Lincoln Scholarship Program, we were able to create this workshop, bring in uh, presenters both from on campus and off campus, um, health educators to come in and speak with students about these topics. Um, and also uh, gain mentoring from Dr. Shalkov to be able to put on this workshop series. All righty. Uh, and then I believe that you channeled that into a summer research project that got funded by Center College and you and Anukriti um, did that over uh, the summer and are now getting ready to bring a um, uh, uh, sexual and reproductive education program to Center College from the spring. Is that correct? Yes, I left that out, but the, yes, our work test continues. So thanks with like, the funding and just the opportunity that Lincoln Scholars Program offers with the Self-Initiative Project, I've been able to sort of continue this work. And this has been the same with even um, my own seminar, which I talked about period poverty, which is something that I continued working on when I was a president, the president for Center Feminist Club. Uh, and that, I think, comes back to what Lizzie described in terms of what does it mean to be a Lincoln scholar and being a leader on campus and, and really um, being a change agent on campus as well, too. Um, another, uh, uh, Tiago asks, Mr. Shalkoff, in your perspective, what does it mean to change the world? Can you give some insight on what specific things you expect from a student? Well, first of all, I can tell you that we deliberately do not define what change the world means. Um, everybody is, uh, is free to explore um, their, their passions and their passion projects. Um, and I think everybody um, comes to the Lincoln Scholars Program um, with, with a very different and very personal perspective on what changing the world means. And, and as a program, we embrace that. Um, my job as the director um, and as the mentor is not to tell you what to do, it's to help you figure out how to do what you want to do. Uh, and so um, in terms of you know, insight, in terms of specific things that we expect from a student, um, I don't expect anything from you in terms of you know, the issues about which you're passionate or the change that you wish to seek. I, I just expect you to be passionate and driven um, and really dedicated to enacting um, the change that you envision for, for our world and being a, a really um, you know, integral part of the learning community that is the Lincoln Scholars Program. Um, to all of the students, this is from Carly, how has the Lincoln Scholars Program helped you obtain your personal and academic goals? Now, Lizzie, I have um, obviously insider knowledge of what you did um, last summer uh, for your themed summer enrichment experience. And I know also that it relates to your uh, major, which is studio arts. And so maybe you wanna talk about how that helped you um, reach some of your academic as well as artistic and personal goals. Yeah, for sure. Um, so last summer, I um, used the theme of um, engaging big ideas to um, do a self-initiated research-based art collection about um, the female gaze and lesbian artists. Um, and so it was really awesome. I got to spend time researching both of those things and creating a body of work that was representative of those things. Um, 
I'm an art major, um, but I'm a ceramic major more specifically. And so I was able to stay on campus and use our studio, which was really great because um, obviously you can't do ceramics without a studio. It's not like painting or drawing. It's not very mobile. Um, so that was really wonderful. And I got to first off create like my first collection of work that has actually since I haven't talked about this, but it actually has been continuing the work that I did, the body of work that I did. Um, I redid a certain part of it this last semester. I mean, it's become like a really big passion project that I think I'm just going to continue to um, develop throughout my life. Uh, but I also, it helped me realize that academically and future wise, what I want to do next is, um, fingers crossed, knock on wood, try and go get PhD in gender studies eventually, because um, gender is something that I'm really interested in. And so the program, Lincoln, the Lincoln Scholars Program really helped me to be able to do that project this summer um, and just like lead me down a path that has enriched both like my work in the classroom this semester and also hopefully the rest of my life. So, yeah. All righty. I am uh, aware of the time and, and how little time we have left here. And I think maybe the way to close this off for us is to go to uh, the question from uh, Gubat. And I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, how would you describe a Lincoln scholar in three words? Um, and so we're going to get one word from each of our Lincoln scholars, and hopefully um, the first person won't steal the second person's word, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so Lorena, you get the first first word. What's one word you use to describe a Lincoln scholar? Dedicated. All righty. Sharon, you're next. Extremely passionate about whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's two words, but passionate. Okay, so we got dedicated, passionate. Uh, and then Lizzie. Encouraging. Encouraging. And then I get three words because I get the last few words here. Um, selfless, courageous, and creative are three words that I would use. And we're turning it back over to you, Lauren. Thank you. That was awesome. That was amazing. I love hearing about what all of you are involved in. Such cool things. Um, I just wanted to encourage everyone, if you tuned in in the middle or towards the end, just to let you know that we will have this on the YouTube page by tomorrow. Um, and so if you wanted to watch the full event, also email us if you have specific questions about applying to Lincoln or applying to Center or just more about the program. Um, I know we could have talked for hours about all the cool things that these students are doing, but we want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, and just thank you again for coming. Thank you for tuning in. Um, the application for the Lincoln Scholars Program is due by February 1st. And so if you're interested in that, um, definitely be checking that out. Get in touch with your admission counselor if you have questions. We'd love to connect you with more information and some awesome students too. But thank you all for tuning in. That's all we have for tonight and we hope to see you soon. Thanks everybody, goodbye.